to ask questions coming from what's at this stage? Is there? Just a quick one about fishing. Thank you, convener. Um, Scotland does have a, a difference in fishing industry compared to the GDP of fishing in the UK. So as we're um, negotiating to look at common frameworks, so um, I'm interested that like the words expendable have been used in the past with fishing. So can you give us a 100% guarantee that, that fishing won't be expended and, or that we have a 100% guarantee that frameworks won't be imposed on our fishing industry? Well, I, I think, again, um, you know, that there are a number of issues a, um, in, in there. The government is absolutely clear that in leaving the EU, we will be leaving uh, the common fisheries policy and becoming an independent coastal state, uh, which, will, uh, which will have the capacity to negotiate our own fishing uh, arrangements. And, and that is uh, the position. It is not, ex it, you know, it's not acceptable to me, uh, and it is not, and, and it is the Prime Minister has made it clear, not acceptable to her to leave the EU on the basis uh, that there would be some pre-negotiated uh, uh, arrangement as in relation to EU uh, fishing, uh, um, uh, fishing access to, to UK waters. Uh, and that's also why we, we, we uh, uh, have uh, left um, the London uh, Agreement uh, as well. In relation to uh, uh, matters within uh, um, the, the UK, uh, then you know, the, there'll be no change to the existing, uh, uh, the existing uh, arrangements, the existing uh, responsibilities uh, exercised uh, within a, uh, here in the Scottish Parliament and within a, a Scotland, and they fully do recognise the fact that fishing is significantly uh, more important, as you said, to the economy of Scotland. And fishing, oper fishing. I, I met with the Scottish Fishermen's Federation uh, this week. I met with Sir Ian Wood, who takes a very uh, ex extensive uh, interest in uh, fishing, also this uh, week, and uh, I've recently met the processors, and everybody in the fishing industry is excited by the opportunities uh, uh, that can arise uh, from uh, Scotland leaving uh, the common fisheries policy. And I think that's what we all need to focus on, is, is allowing those opportunities to be uh, maximised, and I'm absolutely committed to doing that. Thank you. Can we just quick clarification about the 2,500 um, workers that would be seasonal is that for the whole of the uk it is for the whole of uk yes so what proportion would scotland have uh, would it be 10 percent so that would it, it won't be it won't be a fixed proportion it would be based really on the industry and, and, and as you're aware um a, a large proportion of the industry is in scotland so if we even got 10 percent that would be 250 workers would that cover what we would need for our fruit grown season well it's it's it, it, it's not going to be uh, it, it's not going to be divided up in in that way of of 250 for scotland i mean it will be there'll be an opportunity for um the industry to come forward uh, with a um a, to apply for these uh, visas and you know It, it will be focused on uh, uh, on farms, uh, but it will be for non EEA uh, um, residents. And you know, from my discussions with um, the horticultural industry in particular, they, that that was their requirement. Not that it would be because EU residents will be still able to uh, come, and, and with the implementation period, to uh, they will be able to come until the end of 2020. This will be for non EEA. Uh, workers, and that you know that was the feedback I certainly had very strongly uh, from the industry in Scotland was the group of people they wanted additional people these would be additional people that would be able to come okay uh, just a question about uh, a no deal as the s stories throughout the summer if we 're planning for a no deal is that why we 're encouraging people to stockpile medicines? Should we be doing that i mean i 'm concerned um, that there 's twenty eight thousand 
type 1 diabetics in Scotland, many are pump users, and the supply chain associated with their, with their manufacturing distribution comes from Puerto Rico, Netherlands, and other countries where everybody is, I guess, dependent on the supply chain, where all these... Pro I have a constituent that contacted me because his anti-seizure medicine comes from Denmark, and... Uh, it's very specific. It has specific doses. Patients are dose specific, and he's worried about his driver's license being maintained um, if he can't get his meds. So, is it a scared mongering story, or should we be asking people to, you know, stop the meds? Well, I, I think some newspaper reports have uh, uh, amounted to a uh, scare mongering. What the government's committed to doing and, and working with the Scottish and working with the Scottish government and the, the NHS Scotland uh, are uh, closely involved in that is making contingency uh, arrangements uh, to ensure uh, that there is a, a supply uh, of, of uh, drugs for your constituent uh, and for others. So at the level uh, of NHS Scotland, the, the NHS throughout the U United Kingdom, to make uh, sure that in the event of a no deal that they had sufficient uh, medicines available, but not uh, to encourage individuals to, to stockpile, but to make sure that those, you know, those who would be providing or prescribing the medicines had sufficient medicines available. And that was the subject of a technical notice. Okay. It, can I do the PGI one as well? Or? Well, very quickly. Okay. Um, I had concerns yesterday about protected geographical indicators uh, for food products, you know, and it's not just Scotland, it's the rest of the UK as well. Um, and First Minister announced £200,000 to promote Scotch lamb. And so if we're going to promote and protect the provenance of Scottish produce, would PGI status be part of the negotiations to protect that? Can you um, confirm that we can protect our PGI status for Scottish produce? Our intention is that the existing arrangements uh, will remain exactly as they are with the, with the EU, uh, that in any uh, uh, future trade deals that we had, uh, that we would have such arrangements, and that we would also make arrangements. Uh, we would also make arrangements within our own uh, laws here in the Scotland, United Kingdom, uh, to ensure that protection. But we are determined to achieve that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, for Secretary of State, for providing us with evidence this morning. Um, next week, I can confirm the Cabinet Secretary for Government, Business, and Constitutional Relations will also begin as evidence on the EU Withdrawal Act. Um, and with that, I close the meeting. <laughs>